Hello, my name is Chris Richter and welcome back. Make sure that you subscribe, please, so that you can keep up with the next lot of activities that are happening, the uh, next lot of videos that have interactive activities that we're creating using HTML and JavaScript. This particular one looks at a, a sort of quiz question activity that allows students to click on an image to answer a question and it, then it provides them some feedback, all created with HTML and JavaScript and a little bit of CSS. So an example is, uh, the activity for the student could be inside their learning content. Who sang the song Fireworks? And if you were incorrect and chose Bruno Mars, it would come up with that response down the bottom. Incorrect. If you did get it correct, it would be Katy Perry. Yes, and well done. Right down the bottom is the next question option. When you click on next question, it then says, who is Peter Jean Hernandez? And if you knew the answer, you would click on Bruno Mars. And again, next question. And then who was both lead singer and drummer in the same band? That would be this fellow here, which is Phil Collins from Genesis. Next question. And then we have a restart button. So that's the complete activity. We're going to look at the HTML and JavaScript, which is quite simple that created that activity and allows it to work. Let's go. Okay, the HTML that creates this activity. And I'm using JS Fiddle to demonstrate this so that you can look at the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, and the result all in the same panel. All at the same time so it all sort of makes more sense. First of all we have some HTML. Remember in jsfiddle.net here our HTML is this section. We have in there our heading 2 which is h2 which is this heading so you can change that to call it whatever you like. We then have our question box which is just a div called id ri question box. I've put ri in front for ricochet so we're going to use that id ri question box and we'll skate also going to use the question text in here as well. So I've got both of those. I'll explain them why later. I then have used a table for layout here, which you could change that to not being a table, which is quite acceptable because tables are not ideal, but I used it in this case just to keep things really simple and not complicate the CSS. So that's why I've used it. Feel free to argue, happy to. I've also grabbed a class, TD1, and applied that to the each cell. I've added an ID to each image. There's our first image, which is Bruno Mars. Our second image, Katy Perry. Third image is Phil Collins. These are all from Wikimedia, so they're public license images. Then we have our question response ID. is a div which is currently hidden, so RI hide uses this class over here. RI hide display none, so we're hiding things out of the way at the moment. The question text or the next question is also hidden. So it's got RI hide, so you can't see the next question button at the moment because we don't want that there yet. And then we have a restart button as well, which is also hidden, RI hide, because we don't want it displayed yet either. Let's have a look at our JavaScript now. So for the JavaScript, we have a variable called current question set at zero. Because it's zero based, we are starting at zero. Questions are in an array with a question and a response, oh, a question with the question text then a response with the response text. Then the image here, we need to know what the ID of the image is that is the correct image. So we've got that in there as the answer image. We've got that through three times. So that's all okay. Then we have a function that runs when the page first loads. And in this case, it runs the, that function, then runs another little function called reset, which goes down here to function reset. And all that does is basically hide all of the information that's in here and also take it back to question zero. Question zero meaning back to this question just here is question zero. So that's what happens when you press reset. It goes and finds RI question response. So that's the response that appears here when they do get it right or wrong. Uh, it also clears out the question text and hides that for us. It hides the reset button, hides the question box as well. It then goes and adds in the RI question text as in a HTML, which is question, then current question dot question. Now this probably means nothing to you at the moment, but what it means is question is our array that we had right at the start here. It's called questions. So it goes and finds questions. There it is, questions. It looks for the current question, which is based on that number. So zero to start with. So it's gone through this array. It's found the questions. It's found the first one, which is the zero one, which is this one here. And then it finds the element that sits in underneath that, 
In this case, it is question because we're looking for who sang fireworks. That's the part we're actually looking for. So down here, we've got inner HTML becomes questions, current question, which is a number, dot question, which is the question value that belongs to that array. And that produces who sang fireworks. Pretty simple, isn't it, really? Don't go around in circles, just rewind it, play that back a few times. It will make complete sense eventually. Okay. The next thing is we then have to set an event listener on each image. So image one, image two, image three, and there's our, our three images. Image one ID, image two, image three, an event listener so that when they go to click on this image, it runs off to a function called FN check. And for image one, we're doing function check image one. So we know that that is actually image one. And then this, which grabs us the object from this element as well, just so that we've got a reference to that if we need to. If we jump down to our fn check, which is the function that happens when they click on the image, it runs this function. So the answer image is the image for this one here, which is pretty cool. All right, all we need to do then is, uh, first of all, remove incorrect and correct or the, the response or our question response we need to remove the style that was applied to it that shows whether it's correct or incorrect so that's that little bit down the bottom here that shows correct or incorrect then we do a little bit of an if statement if question current question number so that's the questions array current question number is zero to start with and answer image just check that again answer image here if answer image for the question current question that we're on at the moment if that whoop, here we go if answer image equals answer image which is the image name that came from here if they both match then they've clicked on the right person that matches the question so therefore all we do then is go through and add r i correct which is just a class to show that it's green the box below will be green then we add some text to the question response and the text is correct, the answer is, and then we're using the name of the object, which is the object they clicked on. That name just there, we're grabbing that name, which is, if it's this one here, it'll be Katy Perry. We put that name and the response as well from the array question, current question zero and response. That's the response there, which is the name Katy Perry. So I grabbed it in two different ways and I did that on purpose so you can see two different ways of adding it. But you can create your own question response and choose the answer images based on the image IDs that you set up here. Adding in your own images is fine. Then we go down here and obviously that's because they got the answer correct. It does all of this including uh, removing the class hide from next question which means the next question button will appear there now because they got it correct. It then lets you see the next question. So that's all good. Uh, and then it shows if it's incorrect. So we've got an else statement. So if it's correct, do this. Else, it's obviously incorrect. So we just need to add the incorrect and add some text that says incorrect. You chose whatever it was that they actually clicked on. Please try again. Uh, and then we go to the question response just to make sure that that is visible because we had hidden that earlier. So now it's visible so they can see it. And that's basically all of it except for this little bit of CSS up here. So RI hide, RI activity is just to set the width of these images. So it goes to whatever the width is of that area. And I just use my hands then to explain that so you can't see it. Uh, then the RI correct, RI incorrect is just the style that's used for this box here. So this is the incorrect, ri incorrect, we'll do a red background or a pinky red background with the border and the text to match it. If they get it right, it will use ri correct as the class because we've told it to change that down here. And then the last thing was the next question button, which now appears, which brings us back to the last bit, which says uh, that was the event listener we added to our next question so there's next question now which is fn next so if we go to fn next which is here 
All that does is hide the question response, so it hides this part here, gets it out the way. It checks to make sure that the current question we have is not more than the current number of questions, so we can actually increase this by one. So meaning that next question, there is actually a next question. If there is a next question, we increase the counter by one, then we hide the next question button because we don't want that to appear until they've clicked on an answer and tried to get an answer. And we also hide the reset button as well. If it is the last question, then all we need to do then is hide the question text box, hide the RI questions box, and then the reset button has to appear. So we go class list remove hide because we're taking out that class called hide display none. Getting rid of that, it means now the reset button will appear. They've answered all the questions. We're on the last, we've completed the last question. So now it is reset, which takes us back to the start again. When they click the reset button, because reset button has now appeared, we then run the FN reset, which sets our current question back to zero and resets all the layout of everything in there. That is all we had to do. Nice and simple using pure JavaScript. How do we embed that in our content? Go up to embed, remove each one of these. So we can't see the JavaScript HTML CSS, only the result. We use our iframe for this, uh, which is no auto resizing to fit the code. So if I leave this as script, JS fiddle script, and I put that into my learning management system here. So I'm just going into edit some HTML, going to place it in here and go back to display, save and display. We now have our activity being displayed there. Answer the following question by clicking on who is who saying fireworks. If we click on this one here, you'll see it comes up with correct. The answer is Katy Perry. Now notice I had to scroll. I may need to change that to iframe and force the height to be the right height so that they always see the full height rather than scrolling. Next question has appeared, so I can click on next. Who is Peter Jean Hernandez? I click on this one, it's got correct. This is Bruno Mars, and so on to the last one, which is Phil Collins next, and restart has appeared now, so I can restart. We're back to the first question. That's how we add the activity in. I've got more activities for you. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can be ready to see the next ones of these, because there is a bit of a collection. I'm Chris Richter. Talk to you soon.